Good job. See what happens? No. See what happens when you're stupid? See what happens? Huh? No. National security, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! No! Let me out of the box! Daddy, please let me out of the box! I'm stuck! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! I'm stuck up here! I'm stuck up here! Look! Oh, that's right, baby. We're gonna be talking about the one and only, the king, Elvis the Pelvis Presley. Oh, the so-called king. Well, over the years, Elvis has taken a bit of a beating professionally. Here's what I'll say. Elvis's impact on music and acceptance of rock, blues, and gospel in the mainstream I don't think anyone made a greater impact on that than him, and I'm and uh, and in truth, the fact that he was pro civil rights all throughout his life. And career, I mean, let's be real. If he wasn't pro civil rights, that would be so it'd fucked be dumb. up. It'd be fucking given the dumb. fact that like he literally took everything from black culture to make his music. Well, he grew up in a he grew up in a neighborhood that. Had a lot of black folks. Well, I mean, I know him and Jerry Lee Lewis both learned what they turned into rock and roll from seeing people in church, you know, black well, folks in church. But, you but. know, Elvis was no Chuck Berry. No. I mean, there's no real no, comparison. No, 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 no. I will always mm. say this. If Chuck Berry would have been born white or if we would have been more accepting of Chuck Berry as, the, as a black man back in the day, I think a lot of people, a lot of people would be saying, Elvis who? When you look at the people who came through Sam Phillips' recording studio, in, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it, it, I mean, you know, you got Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, you got all the, you know, you, you got all these amazing artists who came through there, but yet it was Elvis that was picked by the mainstream machine. Yes. And was, in some cases, eaten alive by it. And unstoppable. Yes. I'm hoping that this film doesn't doesn't like completely just show him up as being like a like a paragon of like like perfection because Elvis was not a perfect man. No, absolutely not. But Boz Lorman is known well, sort of infamously known for being very artistically beautiful but narratively empty. Mm. For instance, his retelling of the great gatsby visually stunning easily one of the best looking adaptations of the great gatsby but in terms of its overall presentation and its lack of certain story elements that sort of drive the point home it falls short <clears throat> same thing with uh, australia when Boz Lerman did australia his movie called australia it does a lot of things right. It portrays Australian ranch life very well, but it, and it also portrays Australia's, uh, you know, treatment of uh, the half, like the half Aboriginal children. You know, they basically like force them into these schools to try and Caucasianify them. Right. And he doesn't shy away from that, and that is something I think he deserves a lot of merit on. But in terms of the overall narratives, a lot of these films fall short, and I'm hoping that this changes. Because, <clears throat> you know, I'm hoping that he doesn't schmoozy it. I'm hoping that he doesn't just schmooze up to Elvis and pretend like Elvis was some godsend. Right. But either way, I guess we're just going to have to see. Yeah. We got the trailer queued up here. And uh, let's, see what's, let's see what's happening. There are some who'd make me out to be the villain. Of this here story. That's Tom no Hanks. Good thing Are you born with destiny? Ah, uh, just Captain come? Marvel, lightning bolt on his Ah, the him. revival. He's a young singer from Memphis, Those pop Tennessee. Tent, pop tent preachers. Give him a word you don't talk about people who can drag you in. In that moment, I watched that skinny boy transform 
into a superhero. That's all right, mama. It is. Tom Hanks. <laughs> he is. Is he playing t- the Colonel? He's playing mm-hmm. Colonel Parker, I think. Yep. He was my destiny. I wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. Ready to fly. Tomorrow, all of America will be talking about it. Who is Presley? Who is Donald? Who is Donald? I can't move. I can't sing. I'm Some people want to put me in jail. So where's moving? They might put me in jail walking across the street, but you're a famous white boy. The way you sing is God-given, so there can't be nothing wrong with it. Martin Luther King has been shot to death in Memphis. That's all right for you. Tragedy, but it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. Uh, um, Whoever once told me when things are too dangerous to say, sing. Before the shoot, and nobody's gonna remember me. I need to get back to who I really am. And who are you, Oz? I just gotta be making the most of this thing while I can. Again, just this can all be on my flesh. Beautiful. Yeah, this looks great. are the same you and I we are two odd lonely children reaching for eternity the greatest show on earth that's right after my birthday damn. Well, damn. <laughs> well okay mm. there's several things in this trailer that just strike me so like, okay, Austin Butler mm-hmm. as Elvis. He pulls off the look tremendously well. I mean, he I mean, he is just... I think he's got the look down pretty good. And also, yeah. Colonel Tom Parker being played by Tom Hanks. Can't mess up there. Well, again, Colonel Parker is one of the most controversial figures in rock and roll history because he was Elvis's manager, but he was also seen as, like, Elvis's, like chaperone to his own destruction Mm -hmm. because Colonel Tom basically enabled Elvis's bad behaviors and made him... Again, you can judge the man, but also you gotta judge the people around him, too. Oh, yeah. And you have to... And you kind of have to, like... You can't just take history the way it's presented to you. You have to take history as... You know, if it's oral history... Things are getting changed up. I'm sorry, you could be the most paragon, most pure human being ever to exist, but there are things you're going to miscall, you're going to misrepresent, and you're going to forget about. You know why? Because we're human beings and that is what we do. And unless it is, like, actually recorded, you know, m- you know, physical images that you can actually see, in yeah. a lot of Elvis's cases, a lot of his early days, you know, they had, like, the Ed Sullivan show. They mm-hmm. had, like, old pictures from him at fairgrounds and shit like that back in the 50s. And then by the time you get into the 60s, wherever Elvis went, he was being filmed. Yeah. Wherever he went, a camera was on him at all times. And honestly, I just... I'm, I'm hoping... I'm, it looks like they're going to cover and chronicle his whole life. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, we get to see a little bit of a, an introspective thing with Elvis because, you know... He, like, there's been autobiographies written about him, but, you know, I don't think anyone's ever, like, properly told it because it often turns into Elvis and me. Yeah, Elvis of, worship. Yeah, and and they try and put themselves over alongside Elvis and give themselves a higher platform. to live. But I remember Tom Parker asked Elvis a question, and it stuck with Elvis his whole life. It's just like... It's just like, you know, the whole thing is like, we are but children reaching for eternity and all that. Tom Parker basically asked Elvis, it's just like, 
How does a man live forever? How does a man live forever? What determines his legacy to be remembered long after he is gone? I mean, how is that, like, how does that happen? And honestly, no one really knows. I mean, there are people that have existed in our memories for the longest time. They exist in history books. For instance, people like Achilles, the great warrior of uh, the uh, Battle of Troy. That's the only battle he's really known for, but yet people forget he was a conqueror. He was a, he, you know, he worked as a mercenary for, like, the Greeks. Elvis Presley, he's considered one of the greatest musical performers of all time. The ancient Sumerians did a pretty good job. Oh, oh the Sumerians? Well, again, that's them being able to record history. And then you look at the Dark Ages after Rome fell, and you look at how long it was before we got, like, recorded history back, mm -hmm. especially in Europe. You know, because, you know, after Rome fell, there went the printing presses. Everything got burned down. <laughs> and... Again, you know, it's very strange. Like, I wonder how long Elvis's legacy will last. I wonder how long he will live Dude. in the zeitgeist of people's <laughs> memories. I think it was Dwayne Wade that said some shit about, like, how it won't be long before Michael Jordan's legacy is forgotten. I don't think and that's I the was case just like, at all. What? I don't <laughs> what think that the is the legacy are you talking about? at all. Because uh, the whole thing with... The whole thing with... Uh, friggin' like people being remembered is the fact that, for instance, Michael Jordan, in terms of oral history, there are still people who are alive today, people who were born after Michael Jordan's playing days, that regale him as the greatest. Mm -hmm. And I think, would you say that that number's in the thousands of people, who, you know, who were born after Michael Jordan's heyday that consider him the greatest? Way higher than that. Exactly. And here's the pro and here's the thing I think Dwayne Wade's missing. You see, he's looking at it from his own personal introspection. You know, like like in terms of his playing time and in terms. Well, he of, was like, talking about how people forgot about you know the early Lakers players and like the pre Magic Bird greats by the time Michael Jordan was the, the deal, and well, he thinks that Michael Jordan will fall into that same fold. I don't and think I'm so. Just like, I think, I think how. Can you even think that? I think that? Michael Jordan will be a lot like the Robert Parrish. Of, hey, Robert well, Parrish is still... He is the most winningest player coach of he, all time. He Michael Jordan has transcended the sport of basketball. He has. I mean, Michael he Jordan has. is up there with Batman and Spider-Man. Like, okay. In terms of it, like they pointed this out very greatly. Sneakers. Like you're wearing oh, right yeah. there. That is a fashion statement. Yeah. That is modern fashion mm -hmm. because of Michael Jordan and his like and his like seeping his seeping into the into like the modern lexicon. But it's just like Bruce Lee. Culture. They put Bruce Lee in a UFC game. Why? He never stepped a day in the octagon because it's not about Bruce Lee the man. It's, it's about, about Bruce legacy. Lee the character, the yeah. the myth, the yes. legend. The same for Jordan. He's a legendary figure. He's no longer the basketball player, Michael Jordan. He is the winner, the champion, the yes. guy who dominates. The guy just like who, I mean, yeah. there's so many people like that that are just like Elvis. Yes. Elvis's actual human abilities and actually who Elvis was are, are that's insignificant now that he's this myth, this mythology, this yeah. this li larger than life character. And. A lot of that comes from uh, you know him getting into like pop culture mm -hmm. from multiple fronts, music, movies. Film. I mean, uh, when he went to war, when he was actually a soldier. Yeah, when he was a soldier. I mean, <laughs> uh, when he basically retired from performing to be to like be a husband and be mm -hmm. a father. But then all of a sudden he was just like, you know what? This Return of the Mac. Yeah. And then he came back in 1968, knocked it all that, knocked everything, uh, everyone on its ass, and just again, it's unbelievable to see. Like my dad, he said the one one of his childhood memories that he remembered very vividly was when he was 12 years old, and they announced the death of Elvis. Mm -hmm. He remembers that. And everybody's tripping. Oh, yeah. Well, again, like he had records in, in every facet. Like He had rock records. He had country records. 
he had uh, gospel he, gospel records, and his gospel records were huge in a lot of the religious communities, including my dad's parent, my dad's household, who you know, my grandma had Elvis had Elvis gospel records, and you know, it, it hurt it hurt it hurt when he when uh, you know the world lost him because. You know the impact that he had on people's life. Because again, Sam Phillips and his introspection on music, I agree with a hundred percent. If you were, if someone were to hear your song at random, if someone just, you know, at random heard your song, would that song make them make them like change their mind about doing something? If they were lying on the side of the road. And they were dying, and they just so happened to hear your song. Do you think that? Do you think that you know that would, you know, that would help them? Do you think that would, you know, inspire people? They'd be like, "Please, death, please." <laughs> 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 well, I remember Sam Phillips said that to to Elvis. He said that to Johnny Cash. He said he said that to a lot of people. And when he said that to Johnny Cash, you know, Johnny basically, you know, he basically. Uh, you know, realized, hey, I got to be serious here. I got to bring something, something to the plate. And look, Elvis. You know, I guess we'll see how this film turns out. I'll probably go watch it. I mean, it look again visually, Baz Luhrmann, and his visual storytelling is tremendous. And you know, the imagery that I'm seeing here, the you know how Elvis got a lot of his inspirations for his uh, for his movements on stage, and him just like getting that. Again, that's a that shaking and everything like that. That's that Holy Spirit, and once mm-hmm. that that's once that gets in you, man, you can't stop. I mean, once you get addicted to that feeling, of just same like, same as meth. Kind of, yeah, like meth, kind of. It is, and then of course, uh, you know, as soon as he opens his mouth and starts singing, like it it was almost like a a chemical reaction, like. There have been two instances of of like like security guards at like huge stadiums said that the number one thing that they had to had to clean up at these stadiums every time like Elvis or the Beatles perform there piss because the amount of women pissing themselves from just the fact that they were in the presence of <sighs> of Elvis and the Beatles. I almost made a joke, but I'll just leave it. <clears throat> you, I'll, you, well, after we're done, I'll, I'll get you to tell it to me. But anyway, so yeah, that was uh, Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, the official trailer. Very visually interesting. Again, it's Baz Luhrmann. But again, I am interested to see what the critics will have to say about it and what some people who I trust in the critical sphere have to say about it. But again, looks great. Oh, I want it. Oh, oh, oh. So I guess until next time, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. And we'll see you later, everybody. Take care now. Oh.